talk about where to start if you are starting from zero on whatever you want to, I, I hate the phrase like on my fitness journey, on my health journey, because it's like, it, that's just life. But like, if you don't know where to start, I'm going to give you ideas of where to start today. Now, this video is not meant to be, you have to do every single one of these things that I talk about. Because if you take on too many goals at once, you're, you're really not going to get good at anything. So I'm going to give you a number of different things that you could potentially focus on and set a specific goal around to improve your overall health. And I want you to pick one to two things and get really good at those for like three months first and then add in something else. So the first thing I want to talk about is actually sleep. This is something that I personally have been trying to prioritize a lot more because my sleep has really suffered in the past, especially pre-pandemic. You know, teaching group fitness classes at 6 a.m. is a struggle. So I went through a pretty long phase during the pandemic of working for myself where like, I, I, I just felt like I had to get up at 6 a.m. every single day, Monday through Friday, whether I had early morning clients or not. And it was, it, I don't know if it was a mixture of like, I liked that feeling of being up before everyone else. I felt really like accomplished doing it. I don't know if it was like, you know, like the, like the that girl type of thing. I don't really know why I was doing it, but I, I wasn't also then taking the time to go to bed early enough to support waking up at 6 a.m. and getting ready to work every morning. And part of the reason why I can't support that 6 a.m. wake up all the time is because Kevin works later, his whole schedule is pushed later because of his job, and I would really like to see my husband <laughs> and like go to bed at the same time. So the way that I have been prioritizing my sleep recently is that on days where I can, we are in bed by midnight and then I get up at eight, and that's eight hours right there. I actually function great on like six, seven hours, but I've been trying to push it a little bit more toward the eight because I do think that my body also functions great on eight hours. It's like I can do six, seven and, and be perfectly fine, but eight is also really nice too. Now, obviously getting more sleep is like, it's a privilege. I, it's just me, Kevin and a cat. Like we don't have kids. We, I work for myself. So I basically make my own schedule. Kevin works from home when he's not also doing his other job, which is comedy. So like, we're very privileged in the fact that we can control our sleep, but if sleep is the first thing that you want to tackle when you are embarking on like improving your health, you really do have to step back and like self-evaluate. Because in my brain, I was like, no, I have to get up at 6 a.m. every day. And then I stepped back, really looked at my schedule, and I don't have to. And you just kind of have to weigh like, what's more important? Was it more important for me to feel really good about getting up before everyone else and then just having to go to bed before Kevin does? Or do I push my bedtime so that I can go to bed at the same time as my spouse and then just get up a little bit later? And if you guys want more videos just about like sleep, how to improve it, setting a pre-sleep ritual, I have all of these videos here that I've done before. And that's gonna give you a little bit more detailed information on if you wanna tackle this goal. But in the meantime, we have a very weird day. You saw this morning I had a virtual client that was at 8.45, so I woke up at eight. I, woke up at eight. I don't have another like appointment until 5.30 tonight when I'm teaching my Broadway dance cardio class, which by the way, if you ever wanna try, there's one right here on YouTube for free. Um, but other things we need to get done today, I'm actually, I'm getting a new certification. I don't think I've said this online yet, so I'm doing pronatal fitness, which is a pre and postnatal certification. So I'm like a third of the way done. I'm loving it. It's really, really interesting. And I'm loving like just reframing the mindset from like, okay, someone is pregnant. How do we modify for them? And it's like, no, someone is pregnant. How do we prep them for childbirth and parenthood and recovering so that they can do their daily activities? So I don't know. I just really like that mindset shift and I never really thought about it before. So yeah, I highly recommend so far. I'm gonna do a whole video about it once I'm done. Um, but I also need to do a workout today. We'll talk about that later. I need to go on a little walk. We'll talk about that later. Can you see how I structured this video? Different things we're gonna talk about. And that's kind of it. Um, so we're gonna figure out other things to do to keep all of us entertained. But let's get back to studying. Can't figure out how to end this clip. Okay, let's go. Next thing you could focus on is your nutrition. I've talked about nutrition endlessly 
endlessly on this channel. But here's what I'm going to suggest you start with. Again, this is like you are just starting out on trying to improve your health. I want you to start by simply building balanced meals. So when I say a balanced meal, I mean that I want you to try and get one to two servings of protein, carbs, fats, and then some kind of fiber source. I usually like to think of it as veggies, but you can kind of get creative there. So I am building my favorite go-to meal, which is a big ass salad. I like to use the Precision Nutrition Hand Guide, so I'll just like pop that up here. But in terms of each macronutrient, I've got my protein to start. So this is chicken that I just made in the crock pot. I would say this is like one and a half palms. I'm gonna add some rice in there for my carb. That was like almost half a cup. And again, your carb is gonna be like your cupped hand. So we're gonna pop this bad boy in the microwave. Is that too loud? Can you hear me? I've got my fat source, so we've got a little blue cheese. One of my biggest tips if you're like a cheese lover, like I am, especially if you're doing cheese on a salad, use something that's really, really strong, like a stinky cheese, because you can use less of it and still get like a lot of taste. Because again, if we're thinking of like portion sizes, we wanna think thumb, that's gonna be one serving of our fats. Set our base in there, so we've got just like a good old bag of salad. Look at how like, I wish I wasn't so lazy because this is such a freaking rip off, but I like these because they're like really chopped fine so I don't have to do any work. And we're just going to pour like half of the bag in there. So I usually get like two, two salads out of this. Honestly, with the veggies, the fiber, it's just like more, as much as possible. Like more is better, at least for me and my goals. But that's going to be your fist. I have been loving from Aldi, it's like this pico de gallo mix because again, I'm very lazy when it comes to food and making meals. So this is already chopped and it's got lots of fun flavors. And I know someone's gonna be like, you're putting blue cheese with pico? Yeah, I don't have like a sophisticated palate. And then I'm just gonna go in with this spoon. Again, I don't get like super accurate. I'm not tracking anything. And honestly, I don't think that if you're starting out, you need to track. I don't think that most people need to track. I think you can if you enjoy it, but I really don't think that most people need to. Okay, I'm gonna actually save these little guys for later and put them in the fridge. Then I'm just gonna mix this bad boy up and that's gonna be my lunch. I'm gonna add some salt and pepper too. So I have to tell you, I eat a big ass salad like this every day, whether it's for lunch or dinner. And it's just a really simple way for me to quickly get in a ton of vegetables. Oh my God, wait, that's really spicy. What is that dressing? Okay, well, it's all in now, so we're just gonna suffer through that. <laughs> Maybe I just got like a jalapeno from the Pico. Anyway, back to the point of this clip. Keep it simple, balance out your meals. If, if you can eat balanced meals pretty consistently, like on your normal days for a month, then you can think about going a little bit more specific with like, I wanna track my protein or I wanna track my fiber, but like you just have to start with feeding yourself nutrient dense food. That's the first step. I'm gonna finish up this module of studying while eating this, and then we're gonna come back, and I think we're gonna talk about some movement next. Let's do it. is movement, specifically exercise. So I'll show you what I'm doing in just a second, but again, we're kind of talking about if you're just getting started out. If you're just getting started out with exercise or like getting back into a routine, I would say pick something that you enjoy. I don't care what it is, running, cardio, HIIT, strength training, Pilates, bar, literally anything, and just stay consistent with that. And consistent is gonna look very different for you based off of your everything. What is your schedule? What do you enjoy? What do you have time to commit to? What do you have access to? So if by you starting out, you're just getting in one session a week, I think that's amazing. Because if you can stick to that one session a week for a whole month, that's consistency right there. Now ideally for most people, we wanna try and get in like two to four workouts form workouts per week. But again, everyone's circumstances are different, so I don't want you to think that that's like a hard and fast rule. But what I also don't want you to think, and like this is the bigger portion of this, you do not have to do like a six day workout split. 
100% no. I actually like, I wouldn't recommend that for the normal person because the normal person probably doesn't have time for that. The normal person would probably be better off doing three workouts a week and giving their body a little bit more time to recover. That's just my opinion. I know I live in a very different world from like the traditional bodybuilding world though, but I think that most people do. So anyway, I'm gonna do my workout. I've been getting in three of my own workouts a week, three to four, most of the time it's three. And I have been still since January being consistent. I've been going to this group fitness class that I really like in my neighborhood once, once to twice a week. And then I've been doing two strength-based at-home workouts. I usually do full body every time. So like my split would be like, three days a week, full body every time. But I have been noticing that with dancing a lot more and dancing like six, seven hours a week right now, which is a lot for my mid thirties body. I've just been noticing that I really like need to give my legs a lot more recovery time. So my split right now has been group fitness class is the full body. And then I've been doing a lower body day on the weekends and then an upper body day usually on Mondays. Cause then I dance a lot. Actually, I'm gonna be dancing tonight when I teach, but then I'm dancing like a lot, a lot on Tuesday and Wednesday. So that's my splits. We're doing upper body today. I also went to um, a brand new physical therapist recently because I've been having, here I'll, I'll get up and talk. So I've been having a ton of tension from like my SI joint, honestly all the way down to like my Achilles tendon. So like right down to my heel. It is definitely exacerbated when I dance and it's, it's painful. And I say this all the time, every single Friday I do like a Q and A on Instagram and it, Every single Friday, multiple people ask me, I have pain when I do this. And I tell people, number one, check your form. If you're, And then number two, if your form is immaculate, something's wrong. Go to a physical therapist. Like, I can't help you. So I'm going to do my exercises. And then I'm actually, this is like kind of meta, but I've been kind of liking it because it's a good way for me to critique myself and get better at what I do. I've been doing Fit Club workouts. So it's kind of weird to like work out like with myself. It again, it gives me a great opportunity to see where I can improve upon. So we're gonna do that. And then, then we're gonna go for a walk and shocking, we're gonna talk about another form of movement. We are on a walk, getting those steps in, which is the next thing we're talking about. I have to go to the bank because I took $20 from Kevin and I have to replenish it. It's like from his comedy business thing. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But I'm going so far out of my way to like quieter streets just so people don't see me talking to myself. Oh, here comes a person. Okay, we're back. So the next thing that you could set a goal around is just increasing your daily movement or we can think about this as our steps. Now I've talked about this so many times that I feel like it should be made criminal if I actually do it again. So let me keep it really simple. Studies have shown that people who get around seven to 8,000 steps a day, their long-term health risks like high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes, all of these things plummet way down the risk of getting them. So honestly, no matter what your goals are, you should be in a good place with your overall daily movement. I get a lot of people asking about like how to actually do this. And again, I have a lot of videos that talk about it, but I understand that like, for me, it's a lot easier. For other people, it's a lot harder. People work desk jobs, people are parents, people are single parents. I was talking to a single mom recently, like over Instagram DMs and you know, she was really distraught about like, she couldn't get in any exercise or any movement. And I asked her, I was like, can you take your kids and go for a walk after dinner or on the weekends? Like anything, any little bit is going to be better than nothing. Don't think that you have to be perfect. Think that you just have to start and be consistent with what you can do. I think that was the sentence. So if you ever have specific questions about like, this is my schedule, this is my lifestyle, 
what would you suggest? Drop it in the comments, shoot me a message. Like I'm always more than happy to help like brainstorm. And if you guys see a question, you have an idea, drop it below. I don't know everything. I haven't worked with every situation. So it also helps me learn and become a better coach. Okay, I don't know why I'm feeling so awkward filming today. We're gonna go to the bank, we're gonna go home. And I think there's one more thing I wanna talk about today. So we're gonna do that. But first we're gonna turn this off. Ooh, that pimple is popping, baby. Oh yeah. I accidentally sat on the couch and watched Dance Moms for two hours. But actually, that worked out really well because I was like, oh crap, I have to get up with the rest of my day, I have to keep on moving, and I have to film the last tip that I have for this video. And I said on my walk, I was like, I can't really remember what that is. So I just opened up my notes and turns out the last thing is all about relieving stress from your life. Finding healthy ways to reduce or even just cope with different stressors. Stress can put a huge damper in your health and in your goals. You know, we want to have some level of stress on the body and within our lives. Like if we just think about it, like exercise is a stressor. Hi. Talking to my camera. I just watched Dance Moms for two hours. I love you. Anyway. <laughs> So while I am not like really in any way qualified to assist people with stress relief, I think that it's something that you can kind of play with. You know, what are some things that you can use like meditation, going to therapy, implementing exercise, going for a walk, doing yoga, even maybe just like having a phone call with someone that you trust. But finding ways to help relieve and reduce your stress is gonna be key for your long-term health. Something I've been trying to do during my work day is is work a little bit smarter because like I said earlier in the video, I used to get up at 6 a.m. and then I would work straight through, like no break until 6, 7, 8 p.m. And while I can do that and I, I do do very well just like staying focused and, and honed in and zoned in, I don't need to work that hard. I don't right now. Um, there's probably gonna be other times in my business where it's busier and I do need to. So I'm trying to enjoy the moments where I don't have to work as hard and take those moments where I can lay on the couch for two hours, watch some dance moms and just kind of decompress in what I think is a healthy way. So anyway, it's about four o'clock right now. I have to review some dances and then I have to prep for my cardio class. I have to teach my cardio class and then Eagles are playing tonight. So we're gonna watch the Eagles game. Um, unfortunately, tonight is a night where like, I'm not gonna get enough sleep, enough sleep, whatever that means. I'm not gonna get the amount of sleep that I wish that I would be able to get because Eagles are playing at 8.15. I do have to get up like 6.30 tomorrow because I have an 8 a.m. class, so I need that time to get up, wake up, prepare. But it is what it is, it's one day. I think that kind of drills home like the overarching point of this video, which is you don't have to be perfect, you just have to start somewhere. Tomorrow my sleep isn't gonna be perfect, but you know what? Today I got my eight hours, which is great. So anyway, we gotta wake back up, do a little dancing, do a little more dancing, and then watch some birds. Let me know if you have any questions down below, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.